Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Work Podcast, where we're sweating our asses off but grinding for content. Up in what? Here. Do you want me to keep that on? Yeah. Oh, are we keeping the air conditioner? We're on? keeping the air conditioner on. We're not TLV. That's right. Fucking threw that in your face, TLV. Take that. Also, Will and Tony are taking the championship. Will and Tony are taking the championship. Why did I just refer to myself in the third person? Hey, because it's lit. If you guys don't know, in the live stream, Will uh, agreed. Will, longtime fan of both channels. Agreed to be on my team this year for the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge, and yeah. uh, that's worth taking home the title this year. That's what I heard. That's what I know. That's what I know. That's a spoiler. Hey, you heard it here first. In the words of Paul Heyman, a spoiler for Halloween Horror Night. Dang. Um, if you speak it into fruition, it should happen, right? Exactly. We are episode 52 of the Mindless Sword Podcast. New 52. You know New what that 52, means. that's the uh, DC. DC. Yeah. Yep. New 52. Uh, they have a cool Robin in there, I think. New 52 didn't give us anything good. I'll be honest with you. I thought the costume was cool in, for Robin. It was okay. I'm not a big fan of New 52. Oh, uh, well. I got a couple storylines that I like from New 52, but. I don't know. Um, yeah, we're you back. You know better than I would. <laughs> back of the Mindless Sword Podcast. Back in the day. Yep. Copywritten. Come on, man. I know. That's why I just said back in the day. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about. We were supposed to talk about ready or not this week, but like none of us, like we remember it, but it's like we don't remember it enough to like break down the entire yeah. movie. But in short, it's a very good movie. I yeah, like, it was I enjoyed so, it. It was way fun. More. Yeah, I it enjoyed was it fun. Like way more than I thought I would. Same. I thought it was like, oh, it's gonna be like an average movie. It really exceeded my expectations, to be honest. So like, if you haven't watched it, watch it. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Yeah. Uh, also, on the freaking nights of horror, where we're alcoholics. Well, one of us is. No, I don't drink. I don't drink a lot. I only drink when it's been a stressful day. <laughs> yeah. Which is every day. Which is every day. No. And every time I'm here. Uh, if there's, I mean, you guys buy six packs and leave them at my house, so I'm supposed to get rid of them somehow. Hey, yeah. So. Especially, I mean, I haven't tried the red apple ale, but. Oh, you didn't? No, that didn't. was my last one too, man. That's okay. Should tell. Maybe next week. Maybe for the next live stream, we'll get another six pack of red. Well, out. well, we have a live stream well tomorrow. I mean, this will be post recording. But. Yeah, this is uh, pre recorded. So if you guys missed our live streams last week, you guys done effed up. You done goofed. We got our knots one. We and got knots one, and we announced the giveaway. So congratulations to the winner of the giveaway. Yeah. Hopefully, I win. Uh, hopefully. Uh, and then we did <laughs> the uh, Road HHN, which Sammy mm-hmm. came up with that title. Yeah. Uh, and we did Creep Show. Creep Show. That was a good movie, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was fantastic. Even though I've never seen it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, but today, it was a good time. Today on the podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Joker, the new movie trailer that came out yep. uh, as of this recording today. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I'm a huge Batman fan, so. I mean, obviously, we already talked about New Fifty Two for like ten seconds. So. Yeah. So, uh, Joker, it, it's got some horror elements into it, and that's why I'm bringing it on the horror podcast. Of course. Uh, we're going to talk about Ghostbusters for its 35th anniversary coming back to the theaters with. Yep. Uh, blooper reel at the end that they're going to show exclusively in theaters exclusive so that's going to be fun and uh our favorite movie of the summer midsummer is coming back to <laughs> add 30 more minutes in the director's cut of that movie which it's already three hours <laughs> so that makes it three and a half hours it's well when we get to that one I'll, I'll comment but yeah um and sammy's going to share with us his top 10 yeah uh, anticipated Halloween Horror Nights mazes because he was supposed to be on the episode of East vs. West last week and he forgot all about it. I remembered, but I thought we were recording it today. I didn't think we were recording it, well, yesterday. Once again, we're pre recorded, so everything we say in terms of time is last week. Is last week. <laughs> um, so, without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about the Joker. The so, you, Joker. you just you just freshly watched that trailer. What did you yeah. think? I, I thought it was cool. Uh, especially because this is the only s- the second trailer we got, so and the last, and the last. They already called it the last one, so we're not gonna get anything else. 
And I think it did a good job of selling the movie, but not giving too much away. I feel like that was probably only maybe the first half because you really don't know what the conflict's going to be. Obviously, he's conflicted, as you can see in the trailer. And he's trying to figure out his purpose. But I'm making my prediction now. He's killing uh, Mr. Tom, Thomas and Martha Wayne. Yeah, he's killing them. That'd be pretty cool because then it set up the whole origin story of Batman. Yeah. And it wouldn't be the first time they, they took the Joker and made him uh, kill uh, Bruce Wayne's parents. They did yeah. it in uh, the 89 version of Batman with oh, Michael they? Keaton. Um, and Jack Nicholson as a Joker, and they made it so like Joker killed his parents. In reality, it, it wasn't the Joker killed his parents, but yeah. Is it going to be a one-off, or is will there be more? You think for the solo movie? Yeah. Uh, so I, I had heard that Todd, Todd Phillips, uh, the guy who actually uh, written and directed all the Hangover trilogy. Okay. I don't but know. he d he's doing this movie. That's crazy. He's doing this movie. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he co-wrote it and he's directing it. Um, and I th and I believe Scorsese, Martin Scorsese, is producing it. Wow, it's got so, a pretty good cast, a pretty good uh, team like behind it. Team behind it, yeah. Um, you got De Niro in the film. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, the cast is good too. Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. You have Domino from Deadpool too. Yeah. Um, but I think I I know that um, Todd Phillips came out and said like earlier this week that if this does good, he's open to do a sequel. Like he had so much fun doing this movie that yeah. him and Joaquin are just open to come back to do a yeah. sequel. And I like this idea of using a good actor to play the Joker. Yeah, because we all know where Suicide Squad led us. Well, we, it was supposed to be I the enjoyed, launching point of the new DC. I enjoyed Suicide Squad. I hated Jared Leto's Joker, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like we didn't get a lot of him, and what we did get of him wasn't that great. Uh, supposedly, what I read was that they had enough footage to do a, basically a standalone Joker film. That's what I read too. I remember reading that like yeah. when the Suicide Squad first came out. Yeah. So. I mean, I would love to see his other work just to really see him as a Joker, because we only see him really in like three scenes. Yeah, and I know James Gunn is rebooting that series now. Yeah, and he's, I have yeah, so it's gone. A ton of faith in. Yeah. Also, speaking of that Suicide Squad reboot, Taika Waititi is actually rumored to be in the movie. Who's that? The director of Thor Ragnarok and Korg. Oh, wow. oh yeah, yeah. And it, it's kind of a slap in the face to Marvel because, like, James Gunn is bringing all his Marvel friends over. Yeah. Like, Batista's rumored to be um, Bane. Oh, really? They, that's what that's what he wants. That's who he wants to play. That'd be crazy. Um, I think Idris Elba's in the movie. There's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of people coming out in that movie, and it's yeah. good. I think DC the, said, "Well, if Marvel can do it, we'll get we'll get one of their better directors. We'll get their we'll get some of their actors, and well, hopefully uh, that spell is winning." There was a meme when they when my, when Marvel first fired James Gunn. Um, you seen Spider Man too, right? Yeah. That one scene where J. Jonah Jameson goes, You're fired. Yeah. Wait, no, I need you. Come back. You're unfired. <laughs> that was like Marvel when they saw that James Gunn like signed on with DC. Yeah. He signed on with DC. You're fired. And all of Guardians was like, We're not doing Guardians three unless you bring back James. And they brought him back. They're like, Oh, I guess we gotta bring him back. Yeah. He did it so long ago. He's apologetic. Yeah, he's apologetic and he realized he was at a young age when he yeah. did that and he knew he fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I I was like, really? You guys are bringing up old shit? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I had faith he was gonna come back regardless. Just well, like so I, did I. I thought, just I like I have faith back. Tom Holland's coming back. I don't know. I have faith. Supposedly there are negotiations. Again. Sony's freaking stock dropped big time because of that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you play with the mouse, you get the boot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Joker. I, I, I'm looking forward to this. I think Joaquin Phoenix is going to nail the role, do justice to the role since Heath Ledger, actually. Yeah, I mean, because I love Jack Nicholson as a Joker, but Heath Ledger always has a special place in my heart. I mean, Heath Ledger, it was another person where everyone was like, yeah, you're not gonna, you're not the Joker. But then when he fucking came on, oh yeah, I think he was nominated for an Academy Award as the Joker and won. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously you have Christian Bell. Fantastic actor playing Batman. Uh, I mean, he wasn't a great Batman, but he's very. He, you can say he's a good Bruce Wayne, but he wasn't a good Batman. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, you can say. I'll that. get a lot of shit for that. I, yeah. I personally, I enjoyed the fuck out of those movies, but yeah. I just didn't like Bruce or uh, Christian Bale's Batman. No, no, but you can say that Christian Bale is a great actor. He's a great actor. Yeah, I, I all know of his doubt. other work, he really doesn't do. Like watch him in American Cycle. He's great in that. Yeah. He's freaking great in. Um, another movie he was good in terminator salvation which i liked he's been in a ton of movies. yeah he's a great actor 
Um, and then who directed that? That was Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. I mean, Christopher Nolan does he's nothing a, but magic. He's a visionary director. He's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's done Dunkirk, the, the whole Dark Knight trilogy, Inception. Yeah, he's a great name. Dr- it, he's yeah, done it, yeah, yeah, great. And you have Hans Zimmer on the score. Yeah, and the thing I like about uh, Christopher Nolan, much like Quentin Tarantino, is he takes his time doing yeah. his movies, and he doesn't rush them. Like he'll take he'll take time off just to write a good script to a movie, and take his time doing. It. Like yeah. he's doing one right now with Robert Pattinson. Oh, is he? Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing yeah. what he brings. You know, it's a. Ra- I know this isn't horror related, but this is really funny. This really just. It's just really his who Christopher Nolan is. When he did Dunkirk, um, I don't know if you know who Harry Styles is. He was yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from One Direction. He knew new I he had no idea who he was. Christopher Nolan had no idea who Harry Styles no was. No idea. Dude, wasn't he like one of the biggest freaking pop stars in the world at one point? Yeah. He had, like, no, he had idea. no idea. But he was like, Oh, he was a good actor and he fits the role, so That shows you how much he really pays attention to the world then. Yeah, he's just Focused on yeah, the he's work. focused on. Well, I, his daughters cool. had to tell him who he was. It's funny because like uh, like Quentin Tarantino said in an interview, like when someone asked him, like you think, uh, like because he's one of Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan. There's like a handful of directors who still use film, yeah, for directing, like actual film. They they don't use digital. Anything. Yeah, and, and one of the, one of the interviewers asked Quentin Tarantino, "Are oh, you think uh, film will ever die off?" He goes, "I don't think so. As long as there's directors out there like me and Nolan, like." Yeah. So that shows you, like, no one is still old school when he directs as well. Yeah, yeah, because he, he shot Dunkirk, I know, in 60 millimeter. Yeah, and I think uh, Quentin Tarantino shot Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in 70. Yeah. So, I, it actually, uh, they I remember when Once Upon a Time in Hollywood actually opened up, they uh, were showing it in 70 millimeter at his movie theater in Los Angeles. Oh, I would have loved to go see it. Yeah, I want to see what it's like in 70 millimeter. It probably yeah. looks so, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, Walking Phoenix is going to bring uh, – Justice to that role. I'm very much looking forward to this movie. Yeah. Um, I love the Joker. He's probably my all-time favorite villain. Um, and I love the chemistry he has with Batman. I'm hoping one day we'll get a, a chance to see his Joker on screen with a Batman. I don't care what Batman. I just want to see a Batman with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And there's a lot of fan theories, like you said, where it's going to end where Joker kills Thomas and Martha Wayne. Yeah. And that can ultimately set up Batman Year One. Even if he doesn't, even if he's not the one that directly kills him, I feel like, based upon what the trailer showed, he's going to inspire. Yeah. Um, on top of that, too, uh, the only reason I don't think we'll see his Joker with a Batman is because, like, his Joker is, like, Thomas Wayne's age, if not a little bit younger. Yeah, he looks old. He, obviously, Joaquin Phoenix is a little bit older of an actor. And freaking Bruce Wayne. Would be a Bruce kid. Wayne. In, well, in the comics, Joker and Batman are supposed to be around the same age. Yeah. So it's like, you know. I don't know how it'd work out. Yeah, but yeah, Joker. Very much looking forward to. Definitely gonna go see that opening weekend. Yeah, well, I'll probably be there too. Yeah. Um, Ghostbusters. Who are you gonna call? Just hit its 35th anniversary. That's crazy. Uh, well, this year at least. Yeah. Um, and of course, we know it's coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Coming to Halloween Horror Nights. What a better. They're way doing to another it. one. What do you mean? Oh, another, another Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah, with the original cast again. Yeah. Uh, Finn Wolfhard's gonna be in it. Yeah. Big, nice, good cast. Uh, Paul Rudd's in it. Oh, Paul Rudd's in it too. Yeah. Paul Rudd's in it. Yeah. Um. So they're bringing it back to theaters, the original Ghostbusters, and they're going to be adding um, some, like, bloopers and, yeah. you know, outtakes and stuff just for the th- uh, fans. And they'll probably release that on Blu-ray when they do the 35th anniversary. Hopefully. but uh, I, I mean, I'm sure that'll be a fun watch. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, not only get to watch, it, like, a, a, a classic, then you can yeah. just go and watch some bloopers of them making it. So Yeah, you get the bloopers. You get the audio, you get it on the big silver screen, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm very I mean, it'll be a I, good I time. I might want to go see that. I still got to yeah. buy a couple tickets, like, uh, for Three from Hell and Jay and Silent Bob. Reed. Will it be, like, will it be, like, a, a national release or anything like a... I think limited, a Phantom event. A Phantom event? Yeah. I think it'll be a Phantom event. Um, and usually with Phantom events, they get a lot of theaters. Yeah, they do get a lot of theaters, but they're expensive. They're not that expensive. Are they? They're about standard ticket prices. Oh, I thought they were more... Probably maybe an IMAX ticket price, eighteen bucks. Yeah, it's not too. It, I think it also depends on the event. Sure. Like if you do, because I know a lot of events stream the boxing matches and stuff like that. Yeah. I think those are a little bit more because it's a live pay per view. I've done that. I, I've actually went to the theaters once for that. It was a pretty good time. Is it live? Do they actually show it live? Yeah, yeah. It was a while back. I'm still in high school, but it was fun. It was fun because the entire theater audience is getting into it. Getting into it. It's like the one time where the actual theater can be loud. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's cool. But yeah, I definitely want to go check that out only because I know we just recently watched it on the TLD live stream. Yeah, we did. Go check that out. Uh, yeah, definitely check that out. Um, yeah, I would love to see it on the big screen because I never got to see it on the big screen. Neither did I because uh, 35 years ago, I was nothing but a twinkle in the eye. Buddy. Falling down. With all the notifications. Um, what's next? Midsummer. Midsummer. We got great. So, it, like Tony said, it's like almost three hours of a movie. It's fucking gonna be three and a half hours. Now. Yeah, we're gonna get thirty more minutes. It promises more scares and uh, more look at the uh, wonderful people that make that movie. There was not much scares to begin with. Yeah, I think the scariest part of that mo- movie is. The bathroom scene. No, the scariest part of that movie is, I think overall, I think it's more of like one of those, it's like a get out, where it's kind of just like in your head. I want to say the two scary, and this is spoilers for this movie. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, I mean, that's your fault. But you know, I, I filmed a review for that movie and never put it up. I don't blame you. I just, I don't know. Hey, but it's a great cosplay. Yeah, we Mid- saw it a lot. <laughs> At Midsummer. 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 There was Midsummer. a ton of people being Midsummer. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, the two scares that got me the most and, like, they didn't even get me at that were, of course, the um, the scene where she goes into the bathroom and sees her sister. Yeah. That was very reminiscent to uh, Hereditary, which I, saw, I remember seeing that. Yeah, Hereditary. it's the same person who directed it. Yeah, same person, so that's why it was very reminiscent. And the second one being, of course, when um, he's in the, the chapel taking pictures of that book. Yeah. And that guy comes in all naked and... I forgot about that. Yeah, he's naked and he's wearing the other dude's face and stuff. Yeah. So, I yeah. forgot about that part. It was just a fucking weird movie. <laughs> that movie was so weird. It was dumb weird, though. You know what I mean? Like, like when he's having sex with a girl. Like, the girl comes behind and pushes him just that so was he so sticks funny. it in and keeps that, it in. That was, it was so awkward to I, watch. I, I just I did not enjoy myself in that theater. I mean, I was asleep for, like, the first half of that movie. And, like, I tried so hard to defend it, too. Like, it's not a bad movie. And now, like, I think about it more and more. And every time we talk about it, I'm like, it was a pretty shitty movie. Um, I think it's, I think the, I think the issue was pacing. Not only like that, so a long. lot of people were com- comparing this to Hereditary. Yeah. And, like, Hereditary was scary. And this one was just more of, like, it had some horror elements into it. But it was more of just a weird fucking movie. Yeah. For them to add 30 more minutes of the movie. Well, P- well, I feel like this was one of those movies you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. Because I know one of my friends on Instagram and Facebook, he loved the movie. Jordan loved Peele it. loved it, too. Yeah, that's why I was super excited. To, I was like, oh, Jordan Peele liked it. I'm going to like it. Didn't really happen. It was not good. You fell asleep. I know. Like I said, I fell asleep for the first hour and a half. Because it, the, even, I mean, outside of like the death of her sister... Like, a lot of the stuff at the beginning is kind of just, like, terrible relationship. Rocky relationship with her boyfriend. Let's go to Sweden. Yeah. He doesn't want her to go, but she's going to go. Let's invite her anyway. Let's do drugs. Let's trip on some acid. (laughs) Yeah. And then... We're at Sweden in the cult. Yay. Yay. And then we're going to watch some people commit suicide. Go on a fucking wacky adventure. I'm going to become Flower Queen, and we're going to burn down a hut full of fucking sacrifices. Yeah, because we have to do it. We have to do it. (laughs) Every 90 years. Yeah. Um, uh, Let's get tricked into doing it because, you know. Yeah, no shit. (laughs) Let's try to leave. No, we're going to. We only have one truck. Yeah. Take you to the train station, but in reality, we're going to kill you and use you as a sacrifice. Oh, my God, dude. And I hate this. In that movie, (laughs) like, how the fuck is everyone, like, so fucking weak and vulnerable. Like, I'd be fucking killing people left and right if it was for my life. Yeah. I'd find me the nearest weapon, whether it be a fucking hammer, a machete. They can't have... I didn't see one gun there, so they probably don't have any guns. No. So, we're going either knives or fucking heavy weapons, and I'm yeah. killing everyone. Yeah. They got the hammer... They got the... the what is that? The... The mallet. The mallet. I'll fucking use that thing, dude. <laughs> yeah. We're taking people's heads. <laughs> yeah, we're fucking going, dude. Throw it's either me or you. Yeah, it's either me or you. We're doing this shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm burning this whole place down. Yeah, it's, uh, it's safe to say I won't be seeing that in theaters again. I'm considering it, but also I really don't want to sit through like three and a half hours of a movie. 
That's my only thing too. It's like I want to see what that thirty minutes is. If it actually is scary. Yeah. Or do I just wait till it comes on DVD and I'll rent it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'd probably be just cheaper to rent it. Yeah, but I also haven't used my movie pass in a little while, so. Would it be? Would it, would it be part of a list? Uh, I'm imagining. Speaking of a list, you know Regal started one recently. Oh, did they? Yeah. Uh oh. Just waiting on uh Harkins Har- uh, Harkins to start one, and once they do, I'm it's done. <laughs> down, I'm canceling a list and going to Harkins. Yeah, as soon as Harkins, yeah, because Harkins is a little bit nicer. Um, last thing we're gonna talk about is your top ten HHN most anticipated list. Yeah, of course. Your top ten anticipated horror Halloween Horror Nights list. Yeah. Now, um, me and Eddie already shared ours, so if you want to see ours, it's on an episode of East versus West, which is out now on the channel. Yeah. Um, Sammy, however, mm-hmm. is going to share his. And uh, let's hear him, buddy. And maybe we'll agree. Maybe we won't. Let's yeah. See, let's see how much our lists are similar. All right. Before we go, before I even start laying it, laying this down, how much? How many things we're gonna match with? I'm gonna say about a good four. Four. I can guarantee you that we at least have two. Okay. Well, let's, well hold up. Where's my phone at? I don't even know where my phone is. Oh, it's right here. I'll pull up my list, and as you go down, I'll say whether or not I have the same thing. Um, All right. And we'll go from there. I already so. know the first two are already matching, so. Go from worst to the best. best. Yeah, yeah we... uh, definitely. We're going in number 10, coming in with more zombies than, than ever. ever. And also the maze that I, unfortunately, have to go first in. Because you lost. Because I would lost. By the way, for those of you who don't know, on the on the live stream last week, me and Sammy played some trivia <laughs> games. Loser had to go in uh, Maze of Their Choice first. Yeah. And, yeah, so Sammy lost, obviously, because I'm a freaking horror expert over yeah. here at the Knights of Horror. And, I, in uh, my defense, though, my downfall wasn't horror knowledge this time. It was hand speed. That's true. <laughs> um, so Sammy's going to go first in that. We're going to film his reaction. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Number 10. Number 10, Walking Dead. Walking Dead, more zombies than ever. Yes. All day attraction. The longest running maze at Horror Night. Days of Horror is going to cover that. Days of Horror will be covering that. Should be fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, our number 10s are similar. Yeah. Um, is there anything specific why you're not looking forward to it? Only because it's a full day attraction all year. Yeah. Around. And nothing's going to change. So whether I go today to Universal Studios... Or I go. You won't know the difference. Yeah. When you go to the when you go to the actual. Event. Yeah. Like, I mean, there'll know. be three more zombies. And spots where they're not usually so, open, but they'll well, open up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Number nine. Number nine. What do you think it's gonna be? House of Thousand Corpses. <laughs> you already know. Although, I, if if my list was scariest maze, this would probably be taking number one. You think? I think so. I mean, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know. Uh, how much the originals are going to be, how scary the original ones are going to be. But based on the IPs, definitely. Definitely. Based on the IPs, I'm going to go Creep Show would probably be the scariest. Only, I mean, only because I'm, I'm familiar with the work. Yeah, I'm not super familiar, but based upon what I've seen, yeah, I mean, just going, coming in contact with Dr. Satan is going to be terrifying enough. Um, the scares are going to be there. The family's kind of terrifying, so. Um, and the only reason why this takes number nine, I think, one, it's a stacked, stacked lineup. I can't say that enough. It was it was hard to freaking put this list together for yeah, me, at least. Same, same. It's just so many good properties. So many I have, good properties. I have no shit to talk about any of them. Yeah, outside of, of. Outside of Walking Dead. Outside of Walking Dead. And the only, thing, the only bad part about House they've done it before. Yeah. I mean, this time it's done in 3D. Yeah. But it's its fourth time. So... That was my exact argument. It was like, I've been through it already. Yeah. And I know what to expect. But my my counter argument to that was, this is going to be the first time I get to go through it where it's not 3D. So. Yeah. All right. Number eight. Number eight. And this is going to... I know this one will piss off TLEV. Um, and it may, I don't know if it's going to piss you off, but uh, it's uh, Curse of Pandora's Box. Uh, no, that's not gonna piss me off. But it wasn't my number eight. I know. I don't know if that was your number eight. My but. number eight was Holidays in Hell. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, I think I think this one has the opportunity to obviously become much higher. 
but I don't know much about the maze. Obviously, like I know what's been on Twitter. Yeah. From what John Murdy said, and I know what the story of Pandora's box. But they're not really following the story of Pandora's box. They're kind of doing like a demonic twist on it. Yeah, where Pandora becomes like really the. the In a way, it kind of sounds like a witch. Or something, yeah, or something. I've, yeah, I don't no, know. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. That was my argument for Pandora's box. Was like. Other than what Murdy shared on Twitter and uh, the tiny teaser we got, I know nothing about this maze. Yeah. So. And so that, and I know that TLEV. If you watch their video, that was their, both of their number ones. Number one? Yeah, both of them had this at number one. Oh wow. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel it's my eight. But once again, stacked lineup. It, it was really difficult to. to and uh, no, and I even said on East versus West, it might move up because the originals actually might take the event this year. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's. I, I feel like that's what happened last year with Universal Monsters, as a lot of people didn't really have it that high in the anticipated, but once they went through it, they were like, "That was my favorite maze last year." Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Um, number seven. Seven. Is, I'm gonna go with Creep Show. Creep Show. Actually, my number seven was the Curse of Pandora's Box. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh yeah. Creep Show is number seven to me, because, like. I loved what we saw from Murdy at Midsummer um, when he talked about it. Yeah. But I'm not really super, like, I'm hyped, but I'm not, like, super hyped on this maze. Like, I feel like it's going to be a great maze. But well, I can't talk any bad about it. I think I, the only thing I'm I'm kind of unhyped for is because, like, when, we go, when I go opening night and when we go, like, in September, it's going to be, like, I haven't seen the show yet. The yeah. show won't come out till like, early October. Yeah. I mean, the only thing we're going to be going off is the movie, which we're going to watch on Sunday. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's just going to be, like, that little bit of, like, the two scenes that are from the show. I'm not going to know anything about them. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I can see why you put that at seven. Yeah. Uh, number six, though, for me is Ghostbusters. Wow, really? Yeah. Number six is going to be Ghostbusters. I I love the movie. It's fun to watch. I think it's going to be a really cool maze to walk through. But I feel like it's either going to be great or it's going to underperform. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating greatness because I don't think they're going to put crap out there. Definitely. Um, My number six was uh, Universal Monsters. Wow. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yeah. And my argument to that was I was afraid that most of the maze was going to be black walls. Only because, like, I don't know what scenics they're going to use. Yeah. But I'm hoping that it proves me wrong and they use, like, a lot of scenics from each of the movies and they have little face-offs. But my only my only fear for that is the reason why I think it's going to be Black Walls is because it's an opportunity for them to do a scare that they've done in the past with AVP and Freddy vs. Jason, which is have Wolfman on one side, have Frankenstein on the other, and they pop out at you and they're kind of, like, facing off and you're right in the middle of it. Yeah. That's my only scare, or that's my only. That's the only thing I'm afraid of is like the fact that it's just gonna be mostly the whole maze is that. Yeah, I I, I could see that. Um, number, f- what are we? Number five. Five. We're top yeah. five now. Top five now. Holidays in Hell. Okay. Um, I think the facade is incredible, incredible with the postcard, New Year's. I love the idea of being able to walk through all these holidays and really putting that. Victorian era spin on them yeah. that makes them super creepy and I also really feel like it's going to have such cool artwork throughout the scares are going to be cool um, and because they're doing so many different holidays in this maze yeah, uh, it's not going to feel like the same thing as you go from one scene to the next it'll be different even if the scares kind of are the same It'll feel different because the, the color palettes will change, the holiday changes, um, and it, and it bleeds into the the Christmas uh, scare zone, which is really cool. See, I put holidays in hell at eight only because like I've experienced that scare zone. Yeah, it was a fantastic scare zone. Don't get me wrong. Um, my only problem with that is like I'm getting tired of the whole Christmas aspect in Halloween. No, definitely, and I, and I can see why someone who's been there a few times yeah because not only that's not the first time they don't they yeah. like about almost every year that i've went they've done like a somewhat of a christmas yeah. scare zone um or they've done a, like a krampus maze which i enjoyed yeah and i i just want to see something different yeah. but my number five actually was creep show huh because i i love that 
I'm gonna apologize before I get to number four. Don't say it. Don't you fucking I'm not, say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it then. <laughs> you have to say it though. All right, Killer Clowns from Outer Space will be number four. <laughs> Why does everybody put that like on? I think Eddie put that at like four or five too. Oh really? Yeah. It's because of my top three. I I just I'm really excited for. It. That narrows it down. I already know what your top three are now, but yeah. I don't know what order they're in. But. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, Killer Clowns, I loved watching the movie. I've watched it twice now. One time I fell asleep through part of it, but and then the second time I watched it all the way through. And it's it's a fun movie. Obviously, we got to interview John Mazzari, which was incredible. So the music's going to be great. The colors are going to be great. It's going to be vibrant. Cotton candy, popcorn, great time. The clowns are going to be great. Um, I feel like we're going to end up, if we, you know, the more times we go, we're going to always go through Killer Clowns. That's a fucking for sure thing. That's a know. fact. That's a fact. That might be like the fuck first maze every night we go to. Maybe we go through twice. Who knows? Yeah, we, I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll see how many times we get through it. Yeah. But I know that it's going to be fun. But it's just, it, it can't, cr- it's not cracking my top three. You want to know what my number four was? What was it? Stranger Things. Oh, wow. I put it at number four because... And I was actually going to put it higher, but after I watched TLV's anticipated video, I was like, yep, I remember that. Yeah, and it was due I, to the fact that the Demogorgon. It's yeah. the only reason why it's not cracking. That's the only reason why that's, I put it at four. Yeah. Other than that, I had a fucking phenomenal time in that maze. Yeah. It would have probably made my top three if I, if not be that problem. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't think about the Demogorgon again, it would have made top three. So, so far, we got two of the same properties. That's why I told you. I knew that we were getting two. Yeah. So, so far we got that. Number three, I know we're not matching on this one because it's already lower on your list, uh, is Frankenstein versus a Wolfman. Okay. Because Universal Monsters killed it. It was your favorite maze last yeah, year. Yeah, it was. I, I agree that there could be that black wall problem. That's just my only my yeah. only fear for it. I think it's going to be a fucking fantastic maze. Yeah. The music by Slash alone Well, the score, it. I mean, listen to the score. It's on Spotify. Oh, I haven't heard the score. Listen to the score from Universal Monsters. And tell me you're not fucking like looking forward to seeing what he does again for this yeah. year. I haven't. I didn't um, listen to the score. I didn't know it was yeah. on Spotify. If you get a chance, like when you're at work or something, just throw it on and listen to it. It's fucking yeah. beautiful. And um, yeah, like, and don't get me wrong. I I probably would have put Universal Monsters, Frankenstein, Mr. Wolfman top on the list, but I'm just, like I'm scared. I'm just scared of the black walls. But nonetheless, those are two of my favorite monsters. And it's like. I mean, look, you got Frankenstein here. Yeah. I love the Wolfman. Yeah. The Wolfman, I've always loved, like, werewolves and stuff, so that's cool. No. Um, and to see the two clash up is going to be really cool. Yeah, but, it's going to be super cool. Yeah, I'm really, I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. just, I, my, like I said, my only fear for it is we're going to get a lot of black walls and scenes where they're facing off each other. I'm kind of jealous of the East Coast because they're getting Universal Monsters. I know we got it last year, and I really wish I would have went last year because of Universal Monsters because I would have loved to see the Invisible Man. See Dracula. That was a very cool effect, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of jealous of that. But I really feel like Frankenstein is fudging terrifying. Yeah, Frankenstein alone and the Wolfman. Just, I mean, this is Frankenstein's bond. And that's not even like the twisted version they made up for the main. Oh, they made him even more, more scary? Like, look it up, how, how he looks. Like, he yeah. looks a little bit more scarier. Yeah. Uh, all right, now we're in the top two. two top two. Oh, you want to know my number three was? was Wait, it? did you? I think we were just talking about number four. Now we're in the top three. No, no, this was my third. What was your third? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. My third one was us. Ooh. And uh. Yeah, cause yeah, cause yeah. Killer Clowns was four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my third one was us. Uh, two. Two. And this was a coin flip. Coin flip. Us. Really? Yeah, this was a coin flip. Wow. I thought that would have been like your fucking like number one. So I know what your number one is now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what my number one is. Yeah. But my, it was a coin flip. It must have been. It must have been a fucking super hard decision for that one, cause yeah. I know. I know the next two properties you have a lot of fucking love for. <laughs> yeah. And us, I I know like crazy. You've been talking about it all season. All season. And the only reason why I think it didn't get higher is because it wasn't the terror trim. If it was the terror trim. Or opening scare. Or opening scare number one. Yeah. But because I mean, unless they do this feature, hands across America chasing us with scissors. Or just include that in the maze in general. Yeah. Did you see the facade for it recently? No, I haven't. Oh, uh, yes, I did. Tammy sent it to me today. The, yeah, oh, it's yesterday. All, it's all painted now. And yeah. Stuff. Um, and they also added something at the event near the 
the Panda Express in the lower lot, uh-huh. they added like a little, it looks like a walkthrough of the Starcourt Mall. Oh, wow. It doesn't look very big. It's probably like, it has the facade of the Starcourt Mall and you walk through it and walk out. Um, but they're, I don't know, it's not part of the maze. I know yeah. that. It's outside of the maze. So yeah. that's probably a little tease they're going to give us for season three. Yeah. Which I'm happy. Which I'm happy for, so. Yeah. yeah, this was, like I said, it was a coin flip. I bet. Um, I feel like I, the only reason why is because a lot of people have been like, oh, black walls, black walls, black walls. White walls. No, white. Oh, that's true. White walls. That is, that is the joke. <laughs> it'll be white walls. Live stream joke right there. <laughs> yeah, that is a joke. It'll be white walls. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like everyone's giving me ish about that. But I'm, I'm gonna, really excited. I'm legit going to buy you and make you a shirt that says, no more black walls. We want white walls. <laughs> <laughs> we want white walls. That'd be great just to wear this season at the fucking event. <laughs> yeah. And throw the Knights of Horror logo on back. We're good. Yeah. Um, yeah. My number two, yeah. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Wow. I think it's honestly going to be the underdog of the event this year. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people are just like, I've heard a lot of people when they, this maze got announced, they're like, that's not even scary. I don't know why they're doing it. Yeah. But, like, I think it's going to be the underdog of the, night, of the year. And they're going to just all of – even if they had, like, zero scare actors in, that, in there, just the practical effects. Alone, yeah. Alone are going to be so cool. Because the way I've always looked at it, like, maybe we're the Ghostbusters and we're walking through. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, all right. And now we're down to the final one, which number, I know what it is. Yeah, number one. Which was part of the coin flip. Coin flipped it was. Stranger Things. Season two. two. Season I don't, two. I, so I liked season two, but I didn't at the same time. There's a lot of aspects where I was like, eh. There's a lot of stuff I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I mean, the demo dogs are going to be so cool. Yeah, if they do them right. Yeah, if they do them well. Um, I'm curious to see how they're going to pull off the mind flare. The mind flare is going to be cool. Um, I already know what's uh, – is his, name, his name's Will, right? He's the one that has the mind Yeah, he gets, basically. like, possessed. Or yeah, yeah. Just watching the him being possessed in a bed is going to be cool. <laughs> Some exorcist stuff. Yeah. Like these effects they use there. Um, I think you know my number one. Well, I mean, yes. I already know your number one. Is, you knew that from like a fucking football field away. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> K-K-F-O-S. Yes. Killer clowns from outer space. Yeah, I knew that. Yes. I've and been waiting for that to come to the event. You, it was a scare zone, and you were like, "We wanted a maze." Ah, and we, what did we get? A fucking maze, yeah. didn't we? I yeah. was not the only one fucking begging for that no, in Hollywood. I know. I know. There Everyone was a whole was... fucking community who was like, "Murdy, what the fuck, man?" Yeah, we want that fucking scare zone too. And Murdy's like, "I got, I'll do one better. I'll give you a fucking maze." Yeah. If the maze went out into the, it went out to its own scare zone. Oh my god, that'd be so fucking amazing. They yeah. could turn that whole lower lot into like a fucking killer clown scare zone. I'd be genuinely happy with it. Yeah, I know you would. Um, is, while we're on the topic of Horror Nights news, Mike Aiello. Yes. It's his last year. Cause he's he's gonna, moving on to more epic things. He's going to be doing the epic adventure theme park yeah. at Universal. He's going to be part of the creative team. Yeah. That's kind of a big loss because Mike – and I, I'm a little sad too because I wanted to go to a Horror Nights where Mike was involved as part of the creative team. Um, but I'm curious to see how it's going to be without him. I, from what Eddie told me, like – the last couple of years, Mike wasn't too much involved. Okay. So, like, I mean, he was involved with, like, uh, you know, Killer Clowns. He brought that to the yeah. event because that's, like, one of his favorites. Um, but, yeah, Mike, I guess, wasn't involved too much. But, yeah, Mike, good for him, though. He's moving yeah. up. You yeah. know, he's getting – Keep on grinding. I mean, he's been with Universal for a long time. Yeah, and I hope he just puts a lot of great attractions yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Uh, Mindless Horror and the Madhouse Productions, Knights of Horror, over here at the crew. We want to thank Mike Aiello yeah. for uh, doing such an amazing job yeah. putting on the event uh, year after year in uh, Orlando. Yeah. On top of that, doing other creative stuff in the off season. Um, and we wish you the best. We hope that you uh, succeed in your next uh, journey. Yeah. And we can't wait to see what the epic adventure uh, holds for us. Yeah. I mean, I hope. I mean, I know he said he's not going to be. But I really hope, like, maybe they would let him just do one maze next year. Yeah, I think he's just going to be focused on that epic adventure, though. That's going to take a couple years to do. Yeah. And I think he creatively, he just wants to get it right. And no, it... I yeah, I, will, I feel like they have to get it right. Yeah, and then I think he just wants to make it a fucking genuinely amazing yeah. park. So. Yeah, I just, with Horror Nights 30 coming next year. Yeah, that kind of, I, I wish that would have been his last year. Yeah, because I really feel like you want to go out with that bang. With that 30th anniversary. Yeah, because... Yeah, thirtieth anniversary. And I know they're gonna do a big Yeah, they're probably gonna bring back a lot of their original icons and oh, stuff yeah. from the past, which if that's true, 
then we're definitely going next year. Yeah, because I, I was actually – it's funny. As I was watching a Horror Nights history earlier this week. It was on Sunday, I think I watched that. It was like 40 minutes talking about, like, the last 29 years. Yeah. And, yeah, like, I didn't realize how big icons were in Orlando. Yeah, that we want some too bad. Um, yeah. And Jack is terrifying. Yeah, I want, I want to see Jack. Wow. Um, I, I, fun fact, if you uh, – on our East versus West – uh, thumbnail for this week. Jack's on it. He is. Good for you. He's hidden. I haven't even looked. I gotta look now. Yeah. Um, all all right. right. That's gonna do it this week for the Miles Horror Podcast, episode fifty-two. We're gonna be back next week with some more horror news. Yeah. Um, stay tuned because Horror Nights and Haunt Season is right around the corner. Just weeks away. Just weeks away. So if you guys see us at the haunts, come say hi. Go through a maze. Take a picture. Watch Those, me pee my pants. Watch me pee his pants. It's gonna be fun. Uh, Jackie said you are fucked. <laughs> I don't. Shout out to Jackie from Fraction Compass. I know I am. You're fucked. I know. They probably have a picture. No, of she me. didn't use those words, but in in the in the nicest way, she basically said that. They probably have a picture of me. Get this guy. They have you on the most wanted list, probably. Not most wanted. <laughs> yeah, they're like, if you're having a bad night and you need a scare, find this guy. Find this guy. Easy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks for guys. Thanks for watching the Miles Podcast, and we will see you guys next week.